Damian Dennis here for the Pit Sports and Entertainment. We're at C2E2, joined by Gabe and Matt of Double Take Comics. How are you guys doing? Very good. Thanks for uh, uh, coming around to, to talk to us today. Yeah, doing good, man. Doing good. Cool. It's going to be fun because I'm going to be reaching across yeah, and stuff, be great. but it's all good. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what you guys have been doing since you started, what you guys are all about. So Double Take, first thing I want to ask, uh, Gabe, you sent me an email before C2E2 a little bit. I didn't... I should have put two and two together because I'm a big video game nerd, but you know, you guys owned by uh, Take Two. Uh, how did that come about, that partnership, and just, is there any like crossover there? It's a fun story. Um, uh, Take Two Interactive Software is uh, really a tr truly an entertainment company. Um, they own a couple of studios, they own Rockstar Games, they own 2K Games, so you know, anywhere from Grand Theft Auto, Bioshock, Borderlands, uh, even you know the NBA 2K, the WWE 2K, those franchises. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, they decided they wanted uh, to have uh, to add uh, a comic book uh, publisher to their list of, of studios, mainly because what comic book creators are really good at is creating new intellectual property. Um, so they hired Bill Jemis. Uh, who was the president of Marvel between 1999 and 2004 to come in and consult. Uh, and eventually they just say, you know what, why don't you just run the company? Uh, and, you know, around 2013 they started. Uh, I was fortunate to come in, fortunate enough to come in in March of last year uh, and we launched our first comics in September of 2015. Um, so, uh, in terms of crossover, what's really nice about Take Two and the reason uh, the properties that they have have been so successful is because Take Two as a parent company is very hands off in terms of the creative. So all of the studios act absolutely interdependently uh, on creative, on on all of the things that they create. That's why Bioshock is such a rich world. That's why Borderlands is is so successful. It's why they they do things the right way there because and 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 in kind. Uh, they're very hands-off. They know the importance of coming to market strong, but they also know uh, to keep their hands off the creative side of things. Has there been any sort of crossover between the uh, video games and the comics yet? Not yet. Um, I think uh, uh, for now we're probably going to focus on creating original IP. You can never say never, of course. You know, it. Uh, there's there's always possibilities of, of things happening but like I said we're very interdependent studio to studio and uh, at this point uh, the opportunity hasn't arisen but that's not to say that it won't now I want to take a minute to introduce you guys a little bit more to the people watching uh, I'll start with you what what's your role with uh, the comics um, I write a comic book in the 10 called Dedication. Um, it's about a bunch of kids working in a grocery store on the overnight shift when the zombies attack. Um, and basically, the reason why I write that book is because I had experienced many years in retail. Um, so it brings a level of authenticity to the books uh, that they really look for. And um, so, yeah, that's what I do. Uh, I uh, run sales and marketing for the company, um, so this sort of stuff. Um, I talk to comic book shops all day. Uh, you know, a super dream job for a comic book fan going way back, right? Like, get to immerse yourself in a comic book uh, kind of culture all the time, including coming to awesome shows like this uh, and meeting people like you. Um, I also have the opportunity uh, to write remote uh, which is one of the books that, much like Matt, it takes place in radio station, and I worked at a radio station for about seven years. So, uh, again, it brings a, a certain level of authenticity to the book. The trade craft is, is a bit more um, precise, and it feels like, you know, the, somebody actually knows what they're talking about. <laughs> it's going to be fun passing the mic around. <laughs> I love it. I want to hold up dedication here for people to see. Uh, it's kind of funny when you were describing your inspirations behind it there. It almost had a Kevin Smith-esque sort of feel to it. You said, you know, your experience working in retail and stuff. Um, how do those experiences come across in dedication? So, uh, first things first, I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. Uh, I love Clerks, obviously, um, and all of his movies, including Jersey Girl to some extent. Um, but... 
you know, just like Kevin did, like my characters are inspired by people that I know, myself included. Um, the boss character who's a favorite in the office and of myself, George, um, is very inspired by managers that I've had in the past. You know, even when I was a manager, I used a lot of that inspiration. So it really um, is inspired by real life. It's really, it's awesome. I'll do the same thing with remote, hold that up. So what were some of your inspirations behind this series and some of, you know, just your ideas that went into it? Uh, Radio was what I wanted to do with my life before I realized that it's not realistic. Um, yep. So, um, you know, being in media, it's not uh, its not all it's cracked out to be. People have this kind of uh, idea about, you know, if you're on the radio, then you make a ton of money and you're a superstar and all these things. And when I was on the radio, I was making $8.50 an hour. So, it, but it's something that I loved and I still love um, so to be able to to take that passion that you have for something and pour it into something like this and make it more realistic for people who are reading it is just it's a dream come true because it, it's combining like the two things in my life that I've been truly passionate about with comic books and radio um, uh, again much like Matt uh, you know the characters are very much written from the perspective of of you know, Samantha Stanton is the, the main character in, in Remote, and she's very much uh, a reflection of some of the ideas and thoughts I would have when at a radio station when it's just about getting the job done in, in the face of whatever terror is around you, you have a job to do. Um, but then beyond that, uh, there's a character in the book named Ed Grubler, who is the owner of the radio station, who is absolutely and I hope he doesn't see this, uh, uh, a word-for-word -word copy of my, the guy who owned the radio station I worked for, uh, right down to the fact that he, you know, he would forget people's names, so just refer to them as, hey, guy, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, it's, it's so much fun. It's a dream come true. And, and to be able to see your name on a shelf next to Mark Millar and, and Brian K. Vaughn and, you know, on the same shelf in the same store is, is amazing. Now... I don't know if I mentioned this, but you kind of mentioned it when talking about dedication. Uh, zombie outbreak. This uni the universe you guys have created kind of takes place in what is it, Night of the Living Dead? It takes place in that live uh, that universe. Can you explain a little bit about the thought process? Why did you choose that universe? And I mean, like, uh, how do you build upon that? It's if you don't mind, it's it's pretty simple actually. Um, at the end of the day, you have one of the most seminal films in the history of, of film uh, in Romero's classic uh, from 1968. And what ends up happening is very famously that film fell into the public domain almost immediately after it was released due to a copyright error. So it's rife with possibilities to, to expand in every possible direction uh, based on what's happening in that film. So. Uh, as we were thinking about what direction we wanted to go as a company and 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 the properties that were out there that we could use or do we cre create our own intellectual property to start with or do we take something and expand upon it, this was a no-brainer because the fun thing about comics, and I think anybody would, would agree with this, is that there are no rules, right? You can You establish your own rules in your universe, of course, but you can go any direction you want, and truly, uh, once we hit issue threes and into issue fours, things, all hell starts breaking loose. I mean, think of a comic book trope, and you're going to find it in one of the ten books. Aliens, indestructible humans, zombies, of course, but that's the fun of this, is that Night of the Living Dead, the events of that amazing film, are the nexus point of our universe. And then we just let our imaginations go wild in 10 different directions. Um, if you love the movie, of course, you'll be able to follow characters that you love from the film. But then a lot of the books are just new stories featuring new characters. And then uh, once these issues, these five, we're going to go five issues apiece on these. We'll have trade paperbacks in October. And then before the end of the year, we'll have uh, brand new titles that take place in 2016 in the same universe, we're 50 years on from the events of this, the movie, 
Pennsylvania has become a wasteland, superheroes have emerged, and there's a bunch of new stuff coming, but this event is still the unifying event of our universe and affects everything moving forward. So we're here at C2E2. I want to ask you guys a little bit, what have your experiences been like since you've arrived? And have you, have you been here all weekend, too? Cool. Yeah, I've been here all weekend. Uh, mainly our experiences have been this. We've been, you know, doing a lot of press for the books and stuff like that. No booth, which is good for Gabe because we were at New York uh, last year and Gabe was in the booth the entire time. Um, I got the chance to go, like I did some signing here and there, but I got the chance to go walk around and things like that. Um, so this is just mainly press. Yes, we've been here all weekend. Yes, we're completely exhausted, but we enjoy doing this stuff. We enjoy talking about our books because it's it's a labor of love for us. Like, this is my dream. I self-published my first book, um, and that book brought me to Double Take. They hired me to write dedication, and I've been here ever since. So it's, it's, it's truly an amazing experience. Yeah, you know, it, as a comic book fan and uh, a Chicago area native, like this has been my show. I, I would come every year. Um, this is the first time I've been able to come where it says pro on my badge. So it's like I get a little goosebumpy thinking about it. But um, it's it's amazing every year. I mean, the people who who dedicate so much of their 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 existence to fandom to all be able to come together in one place and you see the passion that these people have, the cosplayers and uh, and everything, and they come here and they let their geek flag fly, man. And it's it's just a, it's an absolutely unbelievable experience. And this, the mass of humanity by the end of the day has you completely exhausted in the best way. It's really cool. So a couple more questions for you guys. Uh, what do you plan on doing after our interview? Because I know you told me that, you know, you. Uh, I, I think we're the last interview you guys got. You're gonna go out and just explore the floor for the rest of the day. Oh yeah, totally. Like like we've been walking around and doing a little recruiting and stuff like that for artists and writers. But then now. I've had cash in my wallet burning a hole for three days, so now it's time to go take advantage of all these vendors who don't want to lug all their stuff home and pack up uh, just tons of fun stuff. That's, that's my plan. Yep. Pretty much the same. There you go. <laughs> cool. So last question. I want to know if you can let the people watching know where they can find these books at, especially since C2E2 is over with. They're not going to get it here. You know, where, where can they find your guys' uh, products at? Thank you, yeah. Uh, so, we're big believers at Double Take that, that comics should be cheap and that people should be able to, to read things for free before they, they, they invest uh, and, and move forward. So, uh, to start with, just so everybody knows, the cover price on our books, high quality books, is $2.50 um, because we firmly believe comics should be cheap. We have 10 packs that we put out of every title at the same time, so you get a 10-pack, the entire universe, so you can binge read uh, all 10 titles for 20 bucks. Uh, you can find them at your local comic shop, of course, uh, comicsology.com. Uh, on Comixology, you can download the first issues for free. Second and third issues are 99 cents. On our website, you can also read the first and second issues for free anytime. Uh, through your phone, on your desktop, whatever you like. Um, and then you, that's our website's doubletakeuniverse.com. Uh, and then you can find us on Twitter at, at DoubleTakeNYC, and Facebook is uh, DoubleTakeComics. Uh, basically everything Gabe said, as usual. Um, and then you can find me on Twitter at MattManBegins, and I usually post, because um, I'm friendly with the, the colorist and the cover artist, I usually post a lot of their stuff on there as well. Cool. Well, guys, I want to thank you for joining me here at C2E2. I'm going to let you guys go explore, enjoy the rest of the day, spend your money. That's what I'm going to do, too. So <laughs> thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thanks.